Painting Baby Lucas video tutorial 24 adding flesh warm glazes. Alright, remember our painting is completely dry and we've added our thinner and now we're adding phthalo green and raw umber and I'm wiping my brush so that way I don't apply a thick layer of paint because it will make it very thick. And I've started applying it on his arm and if you're going to be able to see that I'm brushing it back and forth and the reason I'm doing that is because the glaze tends to dry rather quickly so what I'm trying to do is avoid any hard lines that's why I'm trying to smooth it out and blend it in so that way it goes on very smoothly And wherever I see where he had those warm shadows, and he's going to have those warm shadows due to the blanket being around him. And that green is going to reflect on him. When we are outside, we have warm shadows. And when we're inside, we have cool shadows. But because he is surrounded and uh, basically smothered, in a green blanket he's having those warm shadows on him and also the couch is rather warm see there was a little hard line and I'm gonna remove that hard line you can see it right there I'm moving it and I just went ahead and removed that it's very easy to get a hard line with this glaze going underneath the inside of his ear and now we're going to go to the tip of the eye around his eye the other eye wiping my brush more phthalo green raw umber and this is gonna start warming him up he is a rather pink baby but in the photograph I do see those warm golden green shadows and tones on him and this is a perfect opportunity to add that to him I just don't want him all pink because he doesn't seem realistic to me just being all pink and I'm be very careful when I apply that green shadow on his mouth because I don't want it make it seem like he's got a beard So be very careful, especially when painting little babies, children, and women, that it does not look like they have a beard or a mustache. And it's okay to go over um, some areas that you feel you may have applied heavy glaze over. Um, just rinse your brush with turpentine and uh, go over it and it'll remove it. And it, that's what I have um, done right there. I'm just removing some of the warm shadow that I felt I applied too much on. Now I'm going to go and get some yellow ochre and add it to that mixture. And as you can see it's a little bit lighter than the one I had and I'm going to start adding those yellow areas on his skin and it'll make him feel and seem warmer. you can like lightly see the difference it's a subtle difference but it's enough to notice
and add some glaze on there. And that's something you can do. I'm not sure if I mentioned it before. If you have a painting of someone and their tones are rather red, with a large brush, grab some glaze and some yellow ochre. And when your painting is completely dry and you've given it a few days to dry, go over it with a brush and run it all over the flesh tones. Make sure you have no hard lines. And... Uh, That'll warm up your painting and keep it from looking so red. See the difference? I'm sure you can tell the difference from when I first started where he was just so pink. Now you actually see those warm colors on his face. And I'm adding that now to his arm. And if you do see my paintings, I'm notorious for doing that. For some reason, I tend to put a lot of warms on them, like reddish. Then I'll eventually go back with a yellow ochre and just put it all over their body to warm them up. But it's very lightly, very little. You don't want to put too much glaze and very little paint and then have your paintbrush soaked in it. Because you are going to remove that underneath paint even though it's dry. So make sure you add very little glaze on it. And very little paint. You, the more you start painting and the more you start working with your glazes, you'll start knowing what consistency you need to be at. But don't put too much glaze because that's just like putting a lot of water on it. And you're just going to remove it the paint underneath it at this moment I would like to thank everybody who's watched the videos I hope that it did help you in some way if you have any questions by all means feel free to email me your questions um, I hope that it has helped you foremost I want to thank everybody who watches my videos and all my subscribers, you guys are so important to me. I want to thank you all for taking the time and subscribing to me, to all my subscribers. I really feel happy when I do have you and you guys to subscribe to me because it tells me that I'm helping you guys in some way or you like my videos. And that really does mean a lot to me. So to all my subscribers, I... I'm so happy and I hope you guys enjoy this video. This one's for you guys. Jessica, thank you so much for requesting this video. I want to thank you and I hope you enjoyed watching the video. And as you can see, I'm just adding last minute touches. The next video is going to be me varnishing the painting. I would have let this painting dry for a little bit over two weeks before applying the spray-on matte varnish. Thank you guys for watching.